doing tonight? Are y'all ready to worship tonight? Did you bring your best praise tonight? I'm telling you what, he deserves it. I hope tonight you get a little loose tonight. We got, you can make some room. If you got someone next to you that's too tight, just say like, I'm gonna go over in this row because I'm gonna worship like crazy tonight, amen? Come on, he deserves it. Let's just pray. Jesus, we love you. We're here for you. Lord, have your way in this space. Lord, we're just so expectant for what you're gonna do tonight. We've come to say thank you. We've come to say thank you for who you are and what you have done. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Everybody said, come on, are you ready?
just a little a little melody or a little song whatever it is sometimes we just got to get it out you may be at your weakest tonight and you may be at your strongest tonight I don't know what point you're at tonight but I do know God knows where you're at tonight and that's what matters and he's with you and he's for you and there's freedom in this place so I want you to rest in it I want you to seek it I want you to grab it I want you to hold on to it because he's reaching out and he is for you. And tonight we've come to say, Lord, even through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me and for me and I will not, I will not bow down to fear. So 
tonight we're going to pour out our gratitude and I hope that's okay. If it's not, I pray you get okay with it because we have come to say thank you, Jesus, for who you are and what you've done. So tonight I just want to invite you worship with us if you've never lifted your hands maybe tonight is the night that you find freedom in Jesus to say I don't care anymore I don't care what it looks like I don't care what people think or what people say God I just want to worship you because it's all that I have so tonight let's do it together you're not alone let's bring our best praise Jesus, you're so worthy of it all. And so tonight we lay everything at your feet. Lord, whatever we've walked in carrying tonight, from the biggest of battles to the smallest issue, tonight you care about every single thing. And tonight we've come to say thank you that you're on the throne and that you reign above it all. And we pour out our gratitude for you, Jesus. We love you so much, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on.
So 
soak in his presence, soak in his greatness. He reigns so great, so great. Soak in his presence, soak in his greatness. He's so great, he's so great. Like a wind of glory, it's like a roaring sound of love, it's like a mighty thunder full of power, full of soak in his praise, soak in his grace. welcome him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually come out of my mouth. We worship you, Jesus. We give you glory and honor and praise. We, we lift your
your name high. We, we, we thank you, Lord, that your name is above every other name. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Great is our Lord. We worship you. so thankful for his presence, aren't you? Welcome to Tuesday night. We're so honored to have you. This is Mama G and my name is PT, Pastor Tim. And uh, we, we're just so excited to have you tonight. Uh, I love Sunday mornings here. It's crazy. If you haven't been, you got to come. Okay. And if you've come, please come and keep coming. All right. And, uh, but Tuesday night, you made an effort to be here and you fought the traffic and you did all that. So can I tell you, I just believe that God's going to just meet us tonight and just encourage us, um, put fire back in our bones, give us fresh vision. How many of you know he's the restorer, the rebuilder, the renewer? Yeah, he's good. So Mama G and I get to welcome you. And uh, hey, Mama G preached here Sunday morning. And I'm telling you, when I tell you she preached, she preached, she threw down. You gotta back it down a little bit. People, people are going, just bring Mama G, you stay home. And I'm like, yeah, the plan's Those working out. Those are some out. big shoes no, to fill. No, no. I, was, I was nervous. You're amazing. <laughs> Anyhow, we get to worship you and I, we get to worship, worship you. you. We get to welcome you. <laughs> uh, worship you. Anyhow. Uh, we get to welcome you, and right now my daughter is very nervous because she's like, Daddy, please just welcome people. Just follow the but, script. But <laughs> uh, if you're brand new tonight, welcome. We're a little wilder on Tuesday nights than we are Sunday morning. Uh, if you're a little more sophisticated, come back Sunday. We're a little more, well, just a little bit more sophisticated. And uh, so I love smidget, that. Yeah. A smidget more? A smidget more. I haven't heard that word in forever. That's my country She's girl. She's Charlotte, she, North Carolina. I'm a Southern That's why. girl. That's but it. we get a welcome. Why yes, don't you do. tell them and I'll be quiet. Yes, we have a lot of different love languages. I think we we'll do. just talk about one tonight. G5 likes to do what? Yeah, that was the favorite. Right we couldn't leave that one out. We eat after every, every service. Every service so we eat. That's why we say eat. that. That's why but we, we say also, that. But we have physical touch because we physical think it's touch. important because we believe that when you come to G5, you should have five touches from the parking lot till you get in here. Now, those are proper, proper touches. physical touches. <laughs> exactly. That's why we side hug. Yeah. And then there's five touches when you get in the church, and there's oh, yeah. five touches afterwards before you go home. That's and pe 15 touches. People are going, what touches. does that mean? That means... Oh, like, Somebody's so gonna good go, to see good you. To see so, yeah. You. How are you? How long have you been have living you, here? Have you met my head of security right here? Yes. This small fella right here. That's, that's the head of my security. Yeah. That's it. So, we have physical touch. We have different ways we like to greet. Shall we show them? I would love You're making me nervous. I'm like, <laughs> she doesn't know. When I get that look, she's like, what are you about okay, to okay. say? Okay, ready? John's giving me the ego. I like it. <laughs> Be good, go. Be good. Okay. G5 fist pump. G5 fist pump. Yes. Oh, yeah. G5 knee bump. G5 knee, knee bump. bump. Okay. There you knee, go. Knee bump. Knee bump. G5, G5 toe touch. Toe touch. The brand new people are going, really? Yes. They don't do this at the Baptist church. No, do I know. I know don't. they don't. <laughs> what else do we do? G5 side hug. Our oh. favorite. Oh. oh. G5 side hug. And then what else? There's one more. What is it? 
it, sorry, <laughs> it's controversial. I don't know if it is or not. We should quit saying that. It's original. It's the G O J All Famous. G O. The G O Original G Five All Famous Blade Code. G Five Hip Hop. Oh there, there you go. go. Hey, right. three five people, tell them you're glad to see them. We love you, love you, love you, love you. Take a load off. Uh, and uh, hey, don't we have the greatest pastors in the whole world? Yeah. I mean, they're fun and they're cool. Uh, they look good. Um, yeah, so uh, we get an opportunity to continue in our worship. And uh, I've been asked, uh, it's an honor to be able to pray over the offering tonight. And, um, you know, there's we have online church. We have uh, family rooms and we just love you. We love we love our G5 here local. And uh, we're actually, we call ourselves the biggest little church in the world. Because honestly, I, I don't know how many services we have here on a weekly basis because they just keep popping up everywhere. And we have this great thing called duplication and it's going out across the globe and people are opening their homes up and we're just so grateful for what God's doing here. And so when you give, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, you wonder, well, why, why, do, why do I need to give anything at all? And, uh, you know, scripture is very clear that, you, you know, God asks us to tithe, which is 10%, right? And of course, um, I believe that, uh, we believe that, you know, really when you look at giving, uh, it, it's really an intersection of three things. It's, it's an intersection of your faith, your obedience, and your generosity. Yeah, so um, when you give, you're giving to God. You're, you're giving to a mission. And uh, I, I just know that here at G5, the, the, the soil is really fertile. How many of you know that when you plant something in fertile soil, it returns a good crop? And the reverse is true if it's not. So, but, but we're not going to focus on what we're not. We're going to focus on what we are and what God's doing in this house and across the globe. And so, um, Miss Laura has a scripture for us tonight that I just wanted to take a look at. Um, I think, I think my, so I'm going to, I'm going to go with my translation. I think maybe it's a translation here, Laura. So I'm in the New Living, uh, Luke 12, 33 through 34, it says, there is one who is free in giving and yet grows richer. So if I'm free in giving, I grow richer, right? And it says, there's one who keeps what he should give, but, hey, but they need more. How many of you need more? 
Do we need more? Do we think, well, geez, geez, I would love to need more. And I would say that's not just in finances, but how about in relationships? How about in other opportunities? How, how about in the other fruits of life? Not just, not just finances. What about, what about our children coming back? What about our children loving? What about our, our spouses and our relationships getting better, right? And so see, God's gonna bless in all of that. And so we need more. And the man who gives much will have much. And he who helps others will be helped himself. So there's many ways to give and, and you can give of your time, you can give of your talent, you can give of your touch. And uh, you know, you can, you, you're, you're, you're gonna give of your, of your finances and your tithe of 10%. And so when you give, just know that when you give and you give to fertile soil, you're giving to something that's going to produce fruit. And that fruit is something that you're going to be able to have value in your life. And see here at G5, the reason we have all these things going on, we're in heavy week. Are you excited for heavy week? But we're in heavy week, not just because we want things to do. There's plenty of things to do. But G5 is on a mission to actually add value to your life. We wanna see men stand up, iron sharpening iron, ladies that are leading, that are, that are godly women, right? All these things are happening because we want you to grow spiritually. We want you to grow relationally. We want you to grow financially. And we want you to grow in all areas of your life. And so when you understand that blessing of God, his promises and all the promises that he makes, I just want you to know that when you give to G5, that's our mission, that's our heart. And we're gonna continue to pour into God's people. That's us, that's each of us, each and every single one of us. But we need your giving right? And so when you give, that's what you're giving to. So there's ways you can give that are going to be on the screen. We got, you can go to G5 Church online and you can give there. You can text G5 Church to 77977. There's a drop zone in the back where you can give cash and check. And of course, we've got a favorite way. If you're brand new, we'd love for you to get the app and that app gives you back because all the services and all the leadership and everything that goes on here at G5 is there. And uh, the favorite way to give is you just go to the bottom right corner of that app and you go and you can give. So I just encourage you tonight to just open up and let God do what God, God's going to do and let the Holy Spirit move in your life and just, hey, let's have some fun here at G5. We're going to stand. We're going to continue to worship. I'm going to pray and then uh, we're going to have some fun. So Jesus, we just thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for the leadership of this house, Father. We thank you for each person that's watching online in a family room represented here today, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the heart of the giver. We thank you that this place is, is fertile soil, Jesus, and, and many lives are being changed and impacted positively, Jesus, because of what is happening here and your spirit is moving in this place. And Father, we thank you for the lives represented. We thank you for healing. We thank you for, for miracles and broken chains. Father, we worship you, Jesus. God, we give you this day. We love you. We give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, you ready to worship a little bit more tonight? I'm so excited. PT's got a word tonight. We're on our collection on faith, and it has been stretching me upon stretching me. Tonight we're gonna we're gonna sing a song that we've never sung before in church. And I just want to set it up for you just a little bit to get your heart prepared, but I don't know if you've ever been in a place in your life where you thought, this is it. This is it. I'm done. I'm done. I don't think it could get any worse. It for sure is not getting better. It's the worst of the worst. It's no Nothing's good in my life. Nothing makes sense. I'm confused. It feels like continually I'm just being attacked, attacked, attacked. Your heart broken. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you just thought this is it. But the Lord says that if it's not good, I'm not done. And so tonight, I just want this to be a reminder for us that if it is not good, 
God is not done in you and through you and in your family and in your marriage, in your children, in your brother, in your sister, in your son, in your daughter. If it's not good, God is not done. He is not finished yet. He's still on the move. So we're going to sing this song tonight and I pray. You may know it, you may not, but I pray that you would just soak it in that the Lord wants to remind you tonight that I've got you even when you think I've don't got you. That I'm not finished yet. Your story is still being written. Your story is still being written. He still has the pen and he is writing. You've got a future. And he's writing it right now. So hold on to it. Lean into it. He's writing your story and he's not finished yet. Let's sing this together. Come on.
2.10 says this. I'm a King James guy. It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. There is not a mistake in this room. There is not a mistake that you've ever made in your life that will ever take you out of the destiny that God has for you. There's not an incident that has happened in your life that God is not aware and that He is right now making plans for His full purpose to be built in your life. I also want us to look at this real quick in the Amplified Translation, Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking path which he set for us so that we would walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. If you want to know what your future looks like, God has a work for you. I don't care what's happened to you. I don't care what they say. I don't care what anybody around you says. Listen, God has a way of taking the broken things and bringing healing to other people's lives. So I just want us to rejoice tonight to know that God is not done with me. He who that has begun a good work in me will complete it to that end. Can we just say glory, honor, and praise goes to his name. In Jesus' name, that is so awesome. Well, let me chat with you just for a second and then we're gonna eat, is that all right? How many of y'all like to eat out there? Yeah, so we're in the middle of a series here on faith, and I love it. Great job tonight, gang. Wow, can you just tell these worship people what we appreciate and think about them? Uh, Josh was talking about a heavy week, and I know some of you, some new people may be going, what is that? Well, this is the week where we call it triple header, where we have youth night, young adult night, y'all, and we do a ladies uh, night called Girl Talk that is really, really incredible. And then we have a men's call that goes out all over the world. And so uh, this Saturday night, while the women are in the room, uh, some men, if you wanna come, uh, I will have a few other men in this room that we will do something to lift. Normally don't do that, but this this weekend, we wanted to add that in. So uh, just uh, want you to know that. I want to speak to you tonight on imagination. Now, you won't hear a lot of pastors preach on this. It's probably another word for a dream or a vision. But I will tell you, you will never live a big life without a dream. God's got to give you a dream. You, you right now, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what you've already accomplished, right now, God wants to reignite your imagination with your future. And now you tonight have got to open your heart and say, God, I'm ready to receive this. One of the greatest gifts that God has ever given man is the gift of imagination. It is the ability to see things in your mind, to think and create mental pictures in your mind. God gave you this gift of imagination. If I ask you right now uh, to think of a dog Have you noticed that we as human beings think in pictures most of the time? So when I said dog, some of you all saw a big old dog. Some of you saw a boxer. Some of you all saw a poodle. We all saw different dogs, but we saw a dog. When I ask you about the beach, you have the ability right now in your mind to see in your mind a beach. You can even feel the wind blowing, you can even see the waves crashing. You can feel the hot sun under your feet. The ability to imagine. The reason that you and I have this gift is because God imagines. God is a God of vision. God is a man 
that absolutely in his, in his sovereignty and his love and in his great, he is a being that absolutely sees tomorrow today. Before you were even born and you were in your mother's womb, the Bible says God saw you and created your life's work. And here's where we get in trouble. Instead of doing God's will for our life, instead of doing what God imagines for our life, we do what we imagine and we miss out on God's best for our lives. Now, I can bring a lot of people up here right now that could testify to this. Now, as you can imagine, I'm not going to get done with this message tonight, but I'm going to get started on it, and I will finish it next Tuesday night. The Bible tells us that God imagined the entire universe, and it was created. He thought it up before it became a reality. The Bible says that God imagined all of history. God saw this tonight, way before this night ever happened. God saw this land. God saw this building. When we bought the land, we wanted to see lives change. We wanted to see marriages enhanced. I wanted to see leaders built. I wanted to see children get a 30-year jump. I wanted to see people know Jesus as their Lord and Master and Savior. I wanted to see people that just didn't come to church and sat in church and hum, but they actually came in church and they expected God to move on the behalf of their family. Miracles still happen today, and we believe for that in our lives right now. So the reason you and I are even here is because God imagined you before the foundations of this earth. Do you have any idea how precious you are? And in the last year and in the last two years, the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy and pronounce over your life death instead of victory. And I just came tonight to shake that off. Will you let me do that with you? Everything starts with imagination. Nothing becomes reality unless somebody first thinks it up. This building was a vision. This started out as an outbuilding where we were going to park tractors and lawn equipment. And we had a service. Behind these curtains are two big doors. And we came in here and had church one night. No air conditioning. Mosquitoes all over us. We thought we were praising Jesus. We were just keeping the mosquitoes away. And it was so hot in here, I'm telling you right now. We have air conditioning, and some of y'all have to put on sweatshirts, and we're like, thank you, Jesus. It was our goal to get people cold in church because we had been hot in here for so long, we were like, we don't, we don't want to do that no more. So you, you're showing up. You don't have any idea. Three days before we had a major conference here at the ranch, we were in here painting and putting all this in here, and, and you have no idea, but now we enjoy it. But it was seen. This also was built, honestly, to be a television studio so that we could reach the world from this spot right here, so that people could know Jesus. So here's what I can tell you. Without imagination, you couldn't even make a decision. When you start to make a decision, you imagine what would happen if I did this? What will happen if I don't do this? Imagination. And the more you develop your imagination and give it to God, you're going to begin to change the world and miracles are going to begin to happen around you because all of a sudden you will begin to expect and see what other people cannot see. You will see hope where there is despair. You will see victory where there looks like there is defeat. You will see healing where there is sickness. You will see a life coming together where right now you're wondering, Lord, will they ever find their way? Everything has been created on this planet and earth that a human being has made, an architect, was first seen in somebody's mind. I love this so much. We do it in business all the time. In church, I think sometimes we like to over-spiritualize things. But the truth of it is, is this is a very natural thing for a Christian. And yet, when I talk to most Christians, they don't have a picture for tomorrow. 
They don't have a picture or a vision for their family. They don't have a vision for their children. And it's why if you're not careful, you will waste your life instead of investing your life. And if you don't have a vision for your life, you will continually say this, well, you just got to understand this is the way I am. No person comes to this earth just, and all of a sudden you're just great. Greatness is birthed in the toughest moments of your life. It's when you're sweating. I'm running right now with my wife for this 5K. And uh, every day we get up and I have to listen to this lady tell me, begin your warm up. And I'm like, could you just tell her? And so we go, and then all of a sudden she goes, begin running. And we're like little monkeys. And at first you run like a minute, and then she talks you into running three minutes, and then she'll ask you to run five minutes, and then she has you run in 10 minutes, and you're like, really? <laughs> you say, Tim, what are you thinking about the whole time you're running? I'm imagining when I get to quit. <laughs> if I get here, I can quit. Am I, can I get a witness in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, see, some of you, I could get you imagining right now. I could get you to think about a strawberry shortcake. Oh, yeah, come on, make you want to slap somebody. I'm telling you right now, I could talk to you to sprinkle little butterfingers all over the top of it. Oh, yeah, I could talk to you about a juicy cheeseburger where the, the juice is just running out and there's mustard and ketchup and pickle, whatever you like. I could talk to you about a hot French fry. Can I get a witness in here? See, some of us, though, if we're not careful, we use our imaginations for the wrong things. The enemy, if you're not careful, will hijack your imagination and cause you to dream dreams and do things that cause disturbance and separation and confusion instead of unity, harmony, and grace in people's lives. So you got to realize these gifts right now that are given to you, here's what God says. Three categories, if you're ready. I want you to take these down. There are three things the Bible says about imagination. Number one, some things you should not imagine. There are some things that you cannot imagine. Your brain's just not big enough to handle it. And there are some things you should imagine. Now, come on, church, we're getting ready to go to a whole nother level where this is not going to be do 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 This is what the highest performers, the greatest people that expect the biggest miracles do in their lives because they begin to see that God can make something out of nothing. And even in your mess, he creates miracles if you let it happen. So there are some things the Bible says you should not imagine. The Bible tells us, that these are called evil imagination or vain imagination. Make sure you don't waste your life in evil or vain imaginations. What does that mean? I spend my life daydreaming about things that just don't matter. You get to choose what you do with your imagination. You get to decide if you waste it on evil and lust or if you get to begin to use your imagination to begin to see lives radically changed and God using you, you're becoming more of a person that loves Jesus. You want to know the one of the greatest wasted things of your imagination is a little word called worry. Worry is a misuse of your imagination because you imagine something in your mind and then you start to get fearful about it and you go over and over and over it. Psychologists call that ruminating. Here's what I can tell you. You're using your imagination to worry instead of using our imagination to have faith, to believe God, to begin to speak what God speaks. Can I tell you another Lust is a great misuse of imagination. The lust of this world, the pride of life. You can get to the point where you waste your life. Revenge 
is another misuse of imagination. Bitterness and anger and resentment. I don't have to tell you in your life how you can waste your imagination. As you look at this, the Bible tells us that the reason God flooded the earth and told Noah to build an ark was because in those days, all he could find were evil imaginations. Church, would it be said of G5 worldwide in all of our family rooms, church online, that we are using our imaginations not to see what's wrong with people, but to see the miracle God can do in people. So as we begin to move in this, let's move together. There are some things that you should not imagine. The second is there are things that you cannot imagine. The Bible says, I have not seen, ears not heard, the things that God has prepared for us. You can talk about heaven, you can even teach on heaven, but you still can't really fathom how great heaven is. You can't really fathom the power of God, the depth of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the purpose of God, the goodness of God. We talk about it, but I got to tell you, we really struggle in our minds imagining a God who would love us enough to give his only begotten son. And he would die on a cross that you and I might have life and life more abundantly. The Bible says clearly multiple times, you can't imagine how much God loves you. You can't imagine it. Pastors try to preach it. Theologians try to write on it. Worship leaders try to sing about it. You try to express it. And you can't find the words. There are no words. Do you realize the word love outside of the Bible, there is no definition for it? Love. But boy, when you understand and experience love, love is patient. It is kind. It keeps no record of wrong. That's why I tell single people, be careful with love. Because it will make you not see what you need to see. All right, I'm going to let that sit there for a minute. The Bible says that you and I cannot even imagine in our minds what heaven will be like. We try to describe it. Can you imagine walking on streets of gold, walls of, uh, of jet? Can you imagine? But can you imagine seeing Jesus and, and all of his glory and all of his love and all of his grace? Uh, the Bible says no man can look on God and live. We have to be renewed. 1 John 3, 2 says, yes, my dear friends, we are already God's children and we can't even imagine what it will be like when Christ returns. Have you ever done this sometime? Just look up at the sky and it's one of those nights where the sky is just like really, really unique. And then all of a sudden you start imagining Jesus just stepping through those clouds and coming back. There was a song written about it. You remember? I can only imagine. Wow. But then there are things we should imagine. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, fix your thoughts. That means concentrate. It means focus. It means consider. It means meditate. It means imagine. Fix your thoughts on what's true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Can I just ask you a question? My name's P.T. It says it right there, P.T. Mama G, G's, Mama G's got a cup too that says Mama G. And I think they're just trying to remind us who we are and what church I pastor. But here's what I can tell you. If you fix your thoughts, would it be said of you right now that your thoughts are fixed on Him? Or are they fixed on the waves that are around you? Are you fixed on what you've lost? Are you fixed on what you don't have? Is your heart and mind fixed on what's not right? What's been done? What has not been done? Or is your mind fixed on these things? whatever is lovely and admirable. Well, Tim, are you just sticking your head in the sand? No, there's a lot of evil in this world. But if you're not careful, if you watch the news too much, 
you will start to believe the news over God's Word. So you've got to decide what you're going to gaze at and what you're going to look at. Yeah, we'll do that. So as you begin to move in your life, I'm going to give you uh, one real quick tonight, and I'll finish the rest of this. If you want to have a major difference in your life, if you want your family to be different, if you want your finances to be different, if you want your walk with God to be different, do you realize that if you can't imagine that God loves you and that He wants to meet with you, that He wants to answer your prayer, that He wants you to learn His Word, that, you, that God wants you to understand who He is, He's not hiding things from you, He's hiding things for you. If you can't imagine that, you won't even want a quiet time. You won't even want a time where you open the Word of God and you spend time with Him. You'll get so discouraged that you'll just go, no, no, I I, I can't do it. I can't do it. So what do I need to know if my life is going to be all God wants me to be? And by the way, uh, I was talking to somebody today that is very close to me, and they were telling me about their 91-year-old mother or 93-year-old mom that um, she just wonders why she's here. Now, isn't it amazing that God would bless you with 93 years? But do you know how important imagination and understanding your purpose and understanding that God has a plan for your life? Now, I will tell you this right now. Satan does not want you to hear this word. Satan does not want you to get in your purpose. He does not want you to get in your passion. He wants you to stay lost and broken and defeated. He wants you to spend most of your life imagining evil and vain things. That's his goal. But God wants you, according to Ephesians 3.20, to him who is able to do exceedingly above all that we can think or ask. God wants you to start thinking and imagining possibilities. If you're sick, start imagining I'm well. If you don't have money, start imagining that God is going to give you an opportunity that you can step into, that he's gonna bless you. Right now, can I tell you this? Please hear me, church. There is more opportunity in this world right now than there has ever been. And right now we need leaders that will step up who are full of God's grace, full of God's power, full of God's, honestly, just this energy that says, man, the Holy Spirit is going to walk through me and live through me. And I'm going to absolutely watch God bless me and prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Wow. There are two things that God uses. I'll just give you two real quick in our lives that he uses so you can start imagining. One is when we together, and we're going to do this very soon, take communion. This is a very imaginative thing that God uses. He says, when you drink and eat of this bread, I want you to think about what Christ did for you. The other one is water baptism right over here. It is very imaginary. It's the old life being dunked, being buried, and the new life coming out. And it's imagination that God is saying, I want you to know. That's why when alcoholics come to me or drug addicts come to me and they say, well, you're going to understand I'm an alcoholic. I go, no, no, no. Don't ever say that to me again. Don't ever say that to me again. What I want you to say to me is I'm a child of the living God. And his royal blood flows through me. And in the past, I have struggled with these addictions. But don't build your identity in the weakness. Build your identity in the purity of God's grace and his love and his mercy. Have you got me? Stop walking around thinking you're a victim that you can't do it. Some of you right now, you just live in this victimized world that you don't know you're a child of God. And it shows up inside of us, guys. And I just want to let you know. God doesn't want you to live this way. I want you to hear me right now. I'm prophetically speaking to you. Your best days are ahead of you. Your biggest wins and successes in your life are out in front of you. No, I'm not some prosperity preacher, even though I believe in prosperity, right? 
Beloved, above all things, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But here's what I want for you. I don't want money to be your God. I want Jesus to rule your soul. And then God blesses you. And we just become so, 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 so generous. There's such a difference in giving and being generous. So anyhow, let me just move on. So number one, write this down. Are you ready? My imagination shapes my life. My imagination shapes my life. My imagination shapes my life. In other words, the way you think is going to affect the way you feel and the way you feel is going to affect the way you act. Are you with me? Yes. So here's what I want you to do. I, if you can put this statement, I don't know if we can do that, if you can write it, because I really want you to take a picture. I want you to write this and put it on your bathroom mirror. The way you think determines the way you feel and the way you feel determines the way you act. You ever just get irritated? You ever just get like mad? You don't even know why you're mad. You ever go off on somebody and don't know why you went off? You've been thinking which made you feel, which calls you to act. If you want to change the way you act, you have to change the way you think. Romans says, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. And he talks about renewing your mind. I, 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 we have something here called the men's locker room. And, and I noticed that men sometimes are consistent and sometimes they're not, which I believe is a real trick of Satan. Because Satan is so afraid of your mind getting healthy and whole and in the fur, full, full throne word of God. Because he knows then the devil can no longer use anger and bitterness and resentment no longer in your life because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Okay, so my imagination. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says, For as a man or woman thinks in his or her heart, so is he. If I sit down with you and had a cup of coffee with you right now, who are you? Are you somebody that pushed over? Or are you somebody that hurt you? Or are you somebody that... Uh, abandon you? Are you somebody um, that God is just elevating you? Do you see yourself as his son and his daughter? Do you see him yourself as someone that God wants to bless and multiply in your life? Or do you see him as somebody that you've got to work your guts out to just try to please him? It is God's way of saying, and I want you to understand how I work in your life, is through your thoughts. God wants you to understand the way he works in your life is through your thoughts. It's why every one of us, if you've ever had the urge to give or to love or to say I'm sorry or to be a peacemaker, that is God's spirit inside of you. If you've ever had the desire to win and to overcome and be more than a conqueror, if you've ever had the desire to dream bigger dreams and to move on into your destiny, that's God working in you to fulfill his purpose for your life. And by the way, you may not think you're needed, but you are. And I want to tell you right now, I talk to thousands of people that think their job should give the meaning to them in their lives. And God, you can give your work to him, but I want you to know your job probably will never bring the meaning in your life that desperately what service will. And so I want to encourage you to be willing to step out. But you know what we do? We choose the lesser over the more important. So the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 23, be careful how you think for your life is shaped if you're taking notes, I want you to write down, your life is formed by your thoughts. By your thoughts. Your thoughts. What's the dominant thought in your mind? Is it fear? Is it anger? 
Is it resentment? Or is it love? Great grace and incredible expectation that God is up to something incredible in my life. It's why I wrote the book, Good Things Happen to Me. So let me give you some quotes, and I'm going to close, and I'm going to pray that the God of the universe over the next few days of your life begins to deal with you with imaginations, godly imaginations, not evil imaginations, godly imaginations, and he begins to give you a new picture of your life over the next five to ten years. Because I believe what we read in Ephesians 2.10. I believe that God created you, you're his workmanship, and that he's called you. Here's what I want to beg you tonight. I want to beg you not to waste one more day of your life living less than God wants you to live. To know his plan, to know his purpose, to know his promises, to know his provision. So listen to this quote from Albert Einstein. Einstein said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. Logic will get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. Wow. There's no limit to imagination. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Oh, I wish I could preach here. Do you realize your relationship that you have in marriage so much of it is birthed out of your imagination. I, I will tell you, I'm very, like you, I'm very, very busy. My day is full of solving problems. And 15 minutes before I get to my house, I begin to imagine how I want my wife to feel when I walk in the house. There's something about pre-thought instead of just existing, that changes everything in your life. Because if you're not, I promise you, the passion in your life, the passion in your marriage, the passion in your relationship, the passion in your love for Jesus is going to go down the tubes. Because the world has a way of just continually beating into your life through the present existence that you're in, that you forget that I can create tomorrow, today, with God's gift of imagination in my life. I can even create how I make you feel. It's why we're so big on five touches. We're glad to see you. Do you know why people have dogs? Because dogs are happy to see you. Cats, not so much. Gay and I were out here the other day, and I said, I'm going to go feed G7. You'll see him running around here watching. He's got a mean streak in him. But can I tell you, I, 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 I got his food out. I washed his bowls, and, and, and I, I got it all cleaned up. And, and I walked up, and he walked up and looked at me and went. I said, baby, don't worry about it. He loves me. He's just in a little routine. And finally, when he was ready, he walked over and goes, now you have the privilege to touch me. <laughs> and I'm going, I've got an alligator out in that lake that's got the privilege to touch you too. I love you. My name's PT. Can I talk to you? That's one thing. If it's a cat. But if it's a human being, treating another human being with no love and no, it's so good to see you. If I get to the door and all I can hear is everything that's wrong, can I tell you what happens? Nights on the town where there's love and passion turn into nights of fighting and devouring and killing and destroying. You see, it's so easy to study the Word of God and get so spiritual. But then I have no honor in my life. I have no love in my life. I have no self-control in my life. And so I'm not beating up on anybody. I'm just telling you right now, 
If it's true, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Uh, somebody said to my wife this week, uh, does your daughter know she has the gift to preach? And I just listened. Because ever since she's been a little girl and she sang and everybody would tell her how great of a worship leader she was and a singer, I would pull her off to the side and say, baby, God's also gifted you to share his news. You see, it's so important to you because a lot of you act out what the world has spoken over your life instead of acting out what God has put in your life. My son, I would tell him over and over again, son, when he was in mama's womb, I would lay my hands on him and say, Jesus loves me and say, son, you're gonna evangelize the world. What is that? I just wanna have a baby. No, I wanna have a child that will honor God, that will love God, that will honor his parents, that will honor people in church, that will not think church is a place to come and poke other kids, but our our child will come in and go, no, this is the moment for me to honor God. Tonight, my heart was so touched watching your son watch you worship, and then you know what he did? He'd do exactly what you did. I went, Lord Jesus, this is so beautiful. Look, we got the greatest children's ministers in the world, and I love it. But can I tell you, church, I need children to come in here and see men who are not afraid to go, God, have your way in my life. I I need men that not only when they're here, but when they're going down the road, when they're walking into restaurants, when, when no one is watching, we need to be men that are filled with the presence and the power and the, and the wisdom of Almighty God. So I just want to tell you, let God begin to build your imagination to say, you're not done with me yet. See, I'm talking to somebody tonight that God's going to give you the imagination and the burden that you're going to begin to give millions of dollars away. Oh, yeah. Get ready. So uh, it's very interesting that Einstein would see this. C.S. Lewis, the great Christian thinker of the last century, said, imagination is the origin of meaning. Wow. Napoleon Bonaparte said, imagination rules the world. The philosopher Pascal said, Imagination decides everything. William Arthur Ward said, if you can imagine it, you can achieve it, you can dream it, you can become it. Then the great theologian George Lucas. Star Wars trilogy. He said, you can't do it if you don't imagine it. Church, can I ask you a question tonight? Walt Disney said, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in this world. So if Disney can declare that, I declare tonight that G5 will never stop reaching lost souls. It will touch the world. It will change life. It will encourage other pastors. It will help other worship leaders. It will help the lost, the broken, and the bruised. We are going to see marriages healed, women raised, men walking in the light, children who absolutely at age 10 and 12 would be doing what most 25-year-olds will do. And I declare over your life tonight that you will never stop growing no matter what's happened in your life, as long as there's one person in this world who has not heard of Jesus, we're going to imagine that we can reach him. And we believe that God is going to take us in places where no one has ever been. They said, you can't go, and we're gonna watch God build a table in the presence of our enemies and go watch this. My God can do anything you know, but we've got to imagine it. I want to close with this and tell you that uh, in your life, there, there is a, there's a passage 
in the Bible where they talk about the Tower of Babel. Do you remember this? And it's where people got together and they could all speak the same language and they were all in unity and they all started imagining building this tower to God. And the Bible says that God had to come and confuse their language because the people had realized that when they came together in the power of unity, imagining the same thing, that they could do anything. Oh. I want to tell you tonight, in your family, in your marriage, in your church, in your business, get ready. Because we understand this, there are three ingredients you have to have if you're going to have greatness in your life in this area of having a great imagination. Number one, if I'm going to do anything, I've got to have great cooperation. We've got to be unified. The second thing is there has to be clear communication. Clear communication. They're speaking one language. And the third thing is you do have to have great imagination. Could you and I come together, not what group think, but could we come together in unity and take these three incredible principles and say, you know what? We're going to have a million men marching in this army. We're going to have a million women. We're going to have a million youth. My daughter came to me this week spouting fresh vision and fresh fire for young adults here. And I went, yes, yes. God wants to plant something in you. While you're telling him what he can't do, he's going to start making you do what you don't even know you can do. If you will just give him your life. Your greatest days are not past. Your greatest successes are not over. Your greatest moments in your marriage are not done. For you single ladies in the room, your lonely nights are going to turn into beautiful moments with you and God. And God is going to give you the desire of your heart, men. Just honor him. Love him and obey him. When you begin to do this, you'll see that the impossible can become possible. If we all come together and begin to cooperate, if we all come together and have clear communication, if we all come together and begin to imagine, what can God do? So, I got to do it. Can you imagine with me? a building out here with state-of-art equipment where, honestly, we have services and they're piling in, piling in, piling in. Can you imagine you inviting 10 to 20 lost people that don't know Jesus that come to know Jesus? Can you imagine in this community as they move in, they're going to start looking for a friendly, warm, kind church that loves God, who is biblically based, and can you imagine them coming? Can you imagine our children's workers reaching out and touching their lives? Can you imagine with me right now a 100,000 men locker rooms in America alone where men are being taught the principles of God's work. I'm telling you all right now, game on, battle ready, saddle up, get ready because God is ready. And so the only thing I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to ask you, we're going to pray. If I come to you and say, hey, I need you in the war, will you just please consider it? Would you just consider it? You bashful ones, that you kind of walk in a room and go, it's okay. We're going to have a corner just for you. And every now and then, I'm just going to walk in the corner. Because really, honestly, a lot of times that's where I'd rather be. Everybody thinks I'm this wild, crazy guy. My wife will tell you I'm pretty quiet. Well, maybe not that quiet, but I'm pretty (laughs) quiet. And for those of you that love to just be loud and crazy, come on. I I love it. I I think honestly, um, I was just doing a service in Reno and this beautiful woman, while I was preaching on faith, began to run around and scream. "Ah!" And I knew a lot of people were going, what's going on? And I just said, it's okay. If you knew what this woman has been through, if you knew the pain that's in her heart, and if you knew that God is healing her and setting her free, 
you would be running and you would be screaming and you would be shouting and you would believe it. Listen to me. If you knew Ephesians 2.10, that you were created, it didn't break. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, there's a miracle right there. Can you say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah? Isn't that an awful feeling? Every time I drop my phone, I'm like, oh God, don't let it be broke. Is that an awful feeling? Anybody besides me ever break their phone? Oh, good. That's the really intelligent ones in the room. And, and so I, I just want to tell you, it's the craziest thing. But here's what I want you to know. Tonight, as you stand to your feet, I don't want you just to stand to your feet. But what I want you to do tonight is when you stand to your feet, I want you to stand in God's presence. And I just want you to say, God, I'm ready. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Master and Savior, I want you to imagine what it would be like to feel forgiven, to know that your sins are under the blood because it is a reality. It's a free gift. It wasn't free to deliver it, but it's free to you. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I give my life to you. Would you say this prayer after me, everyone? Dear Jesus, I give you my life. I repent of my sins. I'm going to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now a child of God. Right now, if you're here and you're like me and you're saying, God, I'm so ready for you to do something in my life that I can't take an ounce of credit for. I'm ready for you to use my imagination and begin to think of new ways, new ideas, new concepts, God. I'm available. I'm here, Lord. I'm ready for you. If that's you, would you just raise your hands like my hands are raised right now? Have your way in me, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for every hand raised right now. I pray that the power of God would just be revealed in their hearts. And I pray, Lord, as we begin to imagine that you will just infuse our minds with the picture that is in your heart, God, for us. I pray, Lord, that you would begin to cause us to begin to believe, to believe in you, to believe that you love us, to believe us, Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives, to believe that good things will happen for me. God, that you will begin to open doors that no man can shut. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you mine gifts, talents, abilities, and touch. Lord, I thank you that by your spirit, you are going to reveal your vision, your dreams, your heart in every life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for your sake. Could we just worship here and seal this in God's presence? Because I won't forget the things you've done.
for that word tonight. So good. We, does that mean we have to come next week to hear the completion? Okay. What'd you say? And bring a friend. So next week, that means you got to come and get part two and um, bring a friend. Don't come alone. But um, I don't know about you, but I'm coming back because I got to know the power of my imagination. Amen. I'm so thankful for tonight. Thank you for coming and gathering with us. Um, how cool is Jesus? Like, I just think he's the best ever. We want to say this. If you gave your life to Jesus tonight, if you said yes to the greatest invitation you could ever say yes to, we want to say congratulations. Come on, give it up for that. Online in our family rooms, congratulations. Um, we have a book for you. It's a gift. It's called Your New Life, and um, it's just a really beautiful way. If you've got questions, we have some answers for you, and so we would love um, to give this to you today right in the breezeway. You can pick it up at the Connect table. Also, there's a decision card. If you want to tell somebody that you said yes tonight, you can fill that out as well. Um, also, if you want to be baptized, if you want to be dunked at G5, we like to call it, you can fill it out as well. And then um, we have a connect card. So if you want to connect with us, no pressure, but we would love to connect with you. And so if you want to connect with us, go fill that out. We will not bother you, I promise. But we do got some good news going on at G5. And so we want to make sure you guys get in the loop. So make sure you do that. Real quick, I want to announce this. We have this really cool thing where you can text us. How cool is that? So you get to text us now. It's super, super cool. But I would love for you guys to do this tonight when you get off the property. If everybody reach up, take a photo of this right now. Come on, let's, let's do it together. I know all y'all got a little digital iPhone or Android if you're on the dark side. Um, but text us, okay? G5 Church to 55498. And you will be put in this really, really cool group that you will know. So last night we sent out a text saying, hey, it's locker room, 7 p.m., be there. It's just really cool reminders that you guys get to be a part of. Um, and I encourage you to do this because what's gonna happen soon is you guys get to sign up for Girl Talk Things, G5 Women, Locker Room, Youth Nights, Young Adult, all the different areas of hope that go on here and you guys get to be in the loop. 24 7 how cool is that i know we got email but how many read your text over email hallelujah so i encourage you sign up um, and don't miss out on this opportunity i got a little bit of g5 news really quick and then we're gonna head out and we're gonna eat because i know y'all be hungry so we're gonna eat really quick but it is heavy week are y'all ready for heavy week so starting off strong, we've got Youth and Young Adult Collab Night. Woo, woo, woo. Y'all, we're hitting up Sky Zone tomorrow night in Claremont, Florida, and we're gonna have a collab night of our young adults and our youth. Here's the thing, registration ends tomorrow morning, so you gotta sign up tonight or sign up in the morning, but it's cutting off um, right at 12 um, p.m. or yes, p.m. I always get those confused. 12 p.m., correct? Hallelujah. I was homeschooled. <laughs> um, but you need to register g5church.com. Um, you need to sign your waiver. Um, parents, if your child is under 18, please sign their waiver. But y'all, we're going to blow it up at Sky Zone. I do want to honor Pastor John and Miss Nong in the house because they are giving us, hey y'all, they are giving us the privilege to come and be at Sky Zone tomorrow night. So please make sure you thank them and love on them. You guys give, 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 give. And we wanna give, 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 give back to you because we just love you so much. But we're so excited to come and hang out. But make sure you do that. And then on Saturday morning, we're not, we're not having youth or young adult night. Like actually, we're just gonna go hang out this week. But we're having our summer bash. Woo woo! How fun is that? 
So we get to meet up at Lake Eva Aquatic Center at 12. We gonna hang out. Um, we're gonna swim. There's a water slide. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So you guys wanna come and um, join us for that. Youth admission is covered, but parents, if you want to come, it is $5 admission to the Aquatic Center, um, just so you guys know. But youth admission, G5's got you, and it's gonna be a really good day, so I'm really excited about that. And then that night, are you ready, ladies? It's Girl Talk! Woo! Come on, behind every great woman is another great woman. And I cannot wait. This is our third Girl Talk, and I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun. So Saturday, July 16th, 7 p.m., right here at G5 Church, we are gathering. It's ladies' night, and we're gathering for Girl Talk. So here's the thing. You can't come alone. We, go to the, we don't go to the bathroom alone ever as women, so we can't come to Girl Talk alone ever as women, okay? It's, it's just the value around here. So make sure you come, bring your daughter, bring your mom, bring your friend, bring your sister, bring them all. It's just gonna be so good. And then of course we have G5 Church. <laughs> We've got church service on Sunday morning. And then Monday night, men, are you ready? You guys need to gear up because last time you didn't do very good, okay? Monday night, we got G5 men! Wow. Do you guys want to do that one more time, or you think, what do you think? Yeah, ladies, do should we help them out this time? <laughs> okay, we got G5 men. <laughs> See, y'all need our help. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, y'all, we got G5 men's call. You can sign up g5church.com. The Zoom will, Zoom will, the Zoom link will be sent to your email. Hallelujah. And um, 30 minutes of insane growth time with PT. Don't miss it. I encourage you, if you are a man, get on this call. It's so, so good. Um, if you sign up for um, the text, you will get a link to that as well. So just, just get on all the goodness going on around here. It's so good. If you missed any of this, there's a really beautiful thing called our website, hallelujah, and there's a calendar and you can get all the goodness right there. So go check it out, the G5 Master Calendar. Get your information. If you have questions, find me. Find one of our servant leaders. We would love to answer them for you. But that's the G5 News. That's Heavy Week. Are you excited for what the Lord is doing? So good. I got a question for G5. PT already asked it, but we're going to ask it again. G5 like to do what? We like to eat. Amen. We're going to head out. And we're going to eat together. I'm going to bless the food, and then we're going to be released. So, Jesus, we love you. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for the gift of imagination. God, I thank you that you direct our thoughts. And, Lord, you want us to create what you've called us to create. And you want us to imagine what you've called us to imagine. So, Lord, I thank you that we are giving our thoughts and our mind over to you. Lord, I thank you for this food. I ask you to bless it and anoint it to our bodies. Lord, just be in our conversations. May we be uplifting and encouraging. May our attitudes reflect um, your heart and your goodness. Lord, may we carry the fruits of the Spirit. Um, we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, I love you. Have a beautiful evening. Go get you some food. Hey, give it up for Gior here. Gior, he came from the guitar to the keys. You going to sing for us next? Yeah. Hey, we love you guys. Have a blessed night.